Hello, welcome to this week's weekly weight loss vlog. It is February the 12th, 2024. It's Monday afternoon and I'm going to be talking about last week, which is the 5th of February to the 11th of February, which is officially week six of the new year. Week six of 2024. Uh, but only my fourth weekly weight loss vlog because I only decided to start doing these a couple of weeks into the new year. Uh, why am I doing them? As always, a little bit or a good chunk really of my own accountability. I'm going to kind of analyse my week uh, and see how it went on camera and I'm hoping you guys watching might get a little bit, uh, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation. Um, um, to help you on your own journey. First thing I'm going to talk about is it was weigh day last week. Yes, check-in day. Uh, I jump on the scales every two weeks or I try to limit jumping on the scales to every two weeks. Yes, sometimes I do struggle with that a little bit myself. Um, I recommend all my clients get on the scales every two weeks. That's what they do. They jump on the scales every other Friday and send in their check-in to me. And I like to do exactly what I recommend my clients to do. I never want to be called a hypocritical coach, if that's the right word. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, anything I tell my clients to do or ask my clients to do, I don't tell them to do anything. It's up to them whether they do it or not. But anything that I recommend, should I say, my clients do, uh, that I recommend that you do, any of my followers do, I do myself. Um, and yeah, I recommend my, my clients or I ask my clients to, to jump on the scales every two weeks to check in with me. Why every two weeks? Why not daily? Why not weekly? Because, do you know what? We, we all have an emotional attachment to the scales and we need to break that emotional attachment. I've talked about this quite a bit before in podcasts, probably a bit before in in some of these weekly weight loss vlogs, but you might be new or you might have forgotten. I forget half the things I say most, most of the time anyway. But yeah, um, most of us are emotionally attached to the scales. What's an emotional attachment to the scales? It's getting on the scales and getting really frustrated at them or even getting on the scales and getting ridiculously happy with them. Don't get me wrong. If you see a loss on the scales, you should be extremely happy. But when I say getting ridiculously happy, you know, it, you know, some people jump on the scales, they see a five pound loss in a week, which is great. You've lost five pounds, but, you know, it, it could just be a bit of a fluctuation. You could have just caught the scales at the right time. Uh, and then a lot of people, oh, I've lost five pounds. I'll go and eat my body weight in chocolate and McDonald's. And the next thing you jump on the scales and you've gained five pounds and you're crying your eyes out. Anyway, that's an emotional attachment to the scales. And we need to break that emotional attachment. How do you break an emotional attachment to anything? You try and step away from it for good periods of time. Uh, now, obviously, we do need to get on the scales to, to log our progress, but I kind of, if I'm being honest with you, if you're not being accountable to a coach like me, so if you're not checking in with someone every couple of weeks, I would truly recommend weighing monthly, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, if you're consistent, with doing what you need to do, and you jump on the scales every month, you are pretty much guaranteed to see a loss. Now, weight loss isn't linear. That loss, some months, might be two or three pounds. Some months, it might be six or seven pounds. But, you know, generally, if we get on the scale, I say generally, some people get very disappointed, even with a decent loss on the scales. But anyway, uh, you know, most people, especially if you're working on having this much healthier relationship with weight loss and understanding how weight loss works, if you get on the scales and see a loss, you're happy, right? You might not be, you know, jumping up, clicking your heels, but you're, you're relatively happy. And like I say, the further apart you go with weighing, and as long as you're being consistent, the more chance you're going to see a positive result when you jump on those scales. So I get my clients to weigh every two weeks. And really, if you weigh every two weeks, you're going to see a lot more positive than negatives. You know, if you weigh every two weeks, forget Christmas, no need to go near scales at Christmas. You're going to weigh about 25 times in the year. And I would say if you're doing what you what you should be doing, right, if you're being nice and consistent, you should be seeing out of 25 check-ins, you should be seeing a good 18, 19 losses, right? You might see a few maintained. You're going to see the odd gain. Like I say, weight loss isn't linear. It's just the way it is. Anyway, so I get on the scales every two weeks, just like my clients do. And this week, just gone, was uh, official check-in three of 2024. Now, I actually ended up getting on the scales on Thursday morning. 
but why I thought I was going to have to be out of the house quite early Friday morning. Uh, I thought uh, my wife Rachel, we only have one car, and I thought Rachel needed the car uh, on Friday morning. So I was like, do you know what? I'll just get up and go to the gym when it first opens at half six in the morning, so I can get my my training in. Um, um, yeah, basically before she before she needs the car. And when I'm up to get to the gym at half six in the morning, I'm kind of a bit off asleep and I sort of fall out of bed and land somewhere near the toilet and then get dressed and just jump in the car and go to the gym. And I would definitely have forgotten to jump on the scales. And I like to weigh first thing in the morning before I do anything else, before I go to the gym, before I eat anything, before I drink anything. I like to get up, go to the toilet, jump on the scales. That's kind of how you're going to get the most accurate result. Now, I do get my clients checking every two weeks and Friday is checking day, but they're not set in stone. Sometimes clients need to check in on a Thursday. They need to check in on a Saturday. Sometimes they check in on a Sunday. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the odd time. You know, I do recommend checking in on the same day at the same time. So pick a day, pick a check-in day. Is it a Friday? Is it a Thursday? I always recommend trying to be as far away from the weekend as you can be, which is why I always recommend Fridays for my clients. Uh, and try and weigh roughly at the same time, uh, just for consistency and accuracy on the scales. Anyway, Thursday morning, I jumped on the scales thinking, oh, I'm probably going to be out of the house quite early on Friday, so let's do it Thursday. And I was three pounds heavier. I was three pounds heavier from my previous check-in, which was... Um, Friday, I think the 26th of January. So Friday the 26th of January, I was 12 pounds down in four weeks. Weighed on Thursday and I was plus three. So uh, that is nine pounds down overall. Now, most people, if they saw that result, especially with how consistent I am being at the moment, and I really, really am, would have just, it would have just absolutely blown their mind and they would have just probably spat their dummy out. Me, I've been on this journey a long time. I've lost count the number of... Now, normally, I know exactly why the scales do what they do. And I do this time, if I'm being honest with you. Um, and my result didn't finish at this, by the way. I, I am getting somewhere with this. But anyway, you know, I can nine times out of ten justify exactly why the scales do what they do. But I'll be honest with you, especially when I was weighing myself and I didn't quite understand weight loss like I understand it now, the amount of times, I would say 2016, 2017, even 2018, I only really learn what I know about. I don't mean what I know about weight loss as in, obviously I've been on my own journey since 2014 and, um, you know, but when I'm talking about energy balance, exactly how calories work, you know, really understanding how the scales fluctuate through excess water retention, food weight, water weight. I've only really learned that in the last four, maybe five years, something like that, you know, since becoming a full-time personal trainer. And then I've learned loads since becoming a full-time online weight loss coach because I've I've literally buried my, my mindset into weight loss over the last three or four years. So, you know, even 2016, 2017, and sometimes I get on the scales and I'll be like, oh God, this ain't going to be a great result. And net, and it's, you know, three, four pounds down. I'm like, oh, all right. Uh, again, other times I've just been absolutely buzzing, bang on it, not done anything in terms, you know, not had any nights out, you know, stuck to my calories, been absolutely down the line, jumped on the scales and they've not moved. And you're like, how's that work? But, you know, most of the time I can definitely justify what's going on with the scales. But I'll be honest with you, on Thursday, I was a little bit flummoxed because I've had no, you know, what's caused that three pound gain on Thursday? That's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. So I know it's not body fat. How do I know I am not three pounds fatter? Right? Because I've tracked my calories. I know how many calories I burn on average, and I know exactly what I've eaten. And I've been really accountable, really honest with my tracking since since Christmas. I've been absolutely bang on. Now, three pounds, if I lean over here, this is a pound of body fat, right? And there are 3,500 calories in one pound of body fat. So for me to gain 10 pounds, uh, sorry, 
for me to gain three pounds of body fat, I would have to have been in a 10,500 calorie surplus since last check-in, which means I would have had to have eaten 10,500 calories more than I have burnt in the last two weeks to gain three pounds of body fat. In a week, I burn about 24,000 calories, which means in two weeks, I've burnt 48,000 calories. And looking at my calorie counting app, I've eaten about 38,000 calories, right? So if we do the math, I'm actually in a 10,000 calorie deficit, right? So I should not be seeing a three pound gain. I should be seeing a three pound loss in body fat, but we know there's lots of things that fluctuate the scales. Now I've tracked my calories. I've tracked them absolutely spot on, right? And like I say, I can be totally honest with that and I can be totally frank about it. You know, I tend to, I don't actually show you my calorie counting app, but I always go through it. I always post it to my Instagram stories, Sunday night, Monday morning, again, for a little bit of accountability. I've been bang on. So I know I've not gained any body fat. It is physically impossible to gain body fat if you're eating less calories than you burn. You just can't do it. So then I've got to ask myself, well, where else has that weight fluctuation come from? Where has that bump come from? So what else can make the, uh, the scales change? Water weight, food weight, water retention. The loss and gain of those three things. So straight away, my mindset is, right, it's some water retention sat in my body. What have I done to gain three pounds of water retention? Now, gaining, loads of people come on lives and say, how do I get rid, rid of water retention? You can't. It's just, a, it's just a natural process of the body. Sometimes the body stores more water than, than, than is kind of required. The main reason for water retention is generally dehydration, but there's lots of other reasons. Stress, time of the month, certain medications, certain foods you've eaten. There's, there's a whole host of reasons. So straight away, because I've been accountable, I've tracked my calories, uh, my movement's spot on. So I know how many I've burned. I know how many I've eaten. I know it's not body fat. So it's got to be water retention, maybe some excess food weight. So then I'm kind of thinking, you know, have I been eating foods where they're not digesting as quick as they should do? So I've got some excess, you know, waste basically before it comes out in the toilet, sat in my system. I've got some water retention. Yeah. And I was kind of sat there and I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit tired. Being, oh, being tired can cause a little bit of water retention in the body. Uh, have I been on any different medications? No, not really. Um, now, one thing I have started doing last week, so this this was could have been a reason for it, is uh, I've started having a, a pre-workout before going to the gym. Now, normally, I always have some sort of caffeine-based drink, i.e. a Monster Ultra. It's always a sugar-free energy drink, but I always have something like that before going to the gym for a bit of extra pep. But last week, uh, I have uh, been on some pre-workout. Why? Because I found this tub and I thought I might as well use it. Now, what pre-workout, this pre-workout contains a supplement called creatine. Creatine is a naturally occurring supplement in the body, an amino acid, actually, that's stored in, in um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the muscles. Um, anyway, yeah, it's the muscles, it's amino acids, right? Um, but creatine is, and it, it's, it, creatine is naturally occurring in the body. Um, we normally have about a gram of creatine at any one time sat in our body. Um and but if you take or if you have more than a gram, normally about five grams present in your body, it can help with your performance in the gym. Right. It can, you know, you can feel a little bit stronger, a little bit fitter, recover a little bit more, push an extra little bit out. Now, that's great. And it's a totally natural thing. If you eat a lot of red meat, I don't eat tons of red meat. I do eat red meat, but I don't eat a lot of red meat because it can be pretty high in saturated fat and I'm always quite conscious of my health. Um, but um, from taking this, it's been adding creatine into my system and creatine is a known uh, substance that can cause a little bit of extra water retention. It traps water in the muscle to make your muscle harder, right? So straight away, I was like, is it that? You know, there's a few other, there's a few other, you know, a few things going through my mind. Anyway, it just so happens to cut a long story short, though it is still a pretty damn long story. Uh, I didn't have to be at the house dead early on um, Friday morning. So I did jump on the scales again because that was my official check-in day. And 
I was one and a half pounds down. I was one and a half pounds down. And I don't mean one and a half pounds down from Thursday because I gained three pounds. I mean, from my previous check-in. So I was four and a half pounds lighter on Friday than I was on Thursday. I kind of know when I'm going to lose a lot of water retention or when I know uh, a lot of water retention is going to show quite heavily on the scales because I wee a lot. And I really didn't on Thursday. So why do I think this and this is what goes and trust me, I understand that I get this in about a minute. Right. And when my clients check in with me and they don't get the result they want and they'll tell me in their check in, this is the beauty of working with a coach because I message them back. And I analyze things and I break it down for them. This is probably why you've not seen the result you want. And I, it doesn't make it, it doesn't change the result. But I always think if you justify something, it makes it better in your mind. I always use the analogy of, um, it's a long time since I've done this because I don't go for night out nights out anymore. But, oh no, I'm not, sorry, different analogy, different one. Reset, delete the last little bit. Right, the analogy I use is, when you're going, when you log into your online banking and you might be going shopping, right? So you're going to go shopping on a Saturday afternoon and you're going to go buy yourself a new top or some new shoes or something like that, right? And it's, you know, it's the middle of the month or it's, it's the last weekend of the month. So you're getting close to payday, but in your head, I've got 150 quid in my bank account. So I'm all right. I'm going to spend that. I'll get paid next week. You just have a quick look at your online banking and your minus 25 quid. And straight away, you get this panic going through your body. What? I'm 25. I, I've got 150 pounds. Straight away, you think, where's my card? Have I been defrauded? Who's been in my bank account? Who's took my money out? You then log into transactions and it says, I'm, I'm using this analogy now because it's happened to us this month. We bought the house in February. So it, literally all our yearly bills kind of ping out in February. And you bloody forget about it. And the next thing you get a notification on your phone. Uh, on your phone going just had one policy expert 130 quid what the hell's policy expert 130 quid oh, house insurance right okay uh, and but that's the thing when you go in and it's like oh god I've, I've lost this money out of my account you panic when you log into transactions and it flashes up policy expert 175 quid it doesn't put the £175 back in your account doesn't mean you can go shopping again, but because you know you've not been defrauded, it's just a yearly bill that's gone out. Yeah, it's a pain in the bum, and yeah, it might pee you off a little bit because you want to go get yourself a new top or some new shoes, but it justifies it in your mind and you just move on. And that's kind of my job as a coach when people don't quite get the results that they want on the scales. Anyway, for me, to be honest with you, why did the scales, because I've been so consistent why did I see a three pound gain on the scales and then see this four and a half pound drop on Friday? I think there was something underneath the scale. I know that sounds daft, right? But trust me, if you don't believe what I'm saying now, I weigh here in my office and it's a laminate flooring that's rock hard. And my scales are under my shelving unit that's here to the side of me. And I just pull the scales out, I jump on the scales, get my weight, and then I push them back under the unit. If you take your scales and you weigh on different surfaces, hard floor, tiled floor, carpet, yeah, um, put it on your grass outside, you will see loads of different results because it, depending on what the scales are rested on can affect the pressure because that's all that's getting measured is the pressure of you on those scales. And I generally think I've pulled the scales out for whatever reason and I've just got something under one of the one of the footings and it's just sent it off kilter. That's my only explanation because I didn't pee loads on Thursday, so I didn't lose loads of water retention. Um, I didn't, um, like I say, it's not a three pound fat gain and then I've lost four and a half pound of fat because that's physically pretty much impossible. Well, it's physically impossible to gain body fat because I've been in a calorie deficit for two weeks. Uh, even if it was a three pound fat gain, it's physically impossible really to lose four and a half pounds overnight in body fat so i just think it was pro a proper anom anomaly and you know sometimes it is worth if you jump on the scales and you get this total look be honest with yourself be totally honest with yourself but if you get this total random result that you're just struggling to justify in your mind why you've got it Maybe just sometimes you might, if you're using digital scales, recalibrate them. 
take the batteries out, leave them for a minute, put the batteries back in, right? Or, you know, just move them a little bit and make sure there's nothing stuck underneath them, right? But that's all I can kind of put it down to. Now, if I hadn't weighed on Friday, would seeing that three pound gain massively affect it? No, because I've done this for so long now. I just understand that there's this fluctuation. It would have made it harder for me not to go near the scales over the next two weeks because I would, in my head, wanted to see that loss gone. Hello, man. I'm still a work in progress. I've been at this 10 years. You know, I'm not a finished article in all this. But I would have stayed away because what would then have happened if I'd stayed on with my consistency, although I'm trying to see two to three pounds of loss, fat loss, every check-in, what probably would have happened was if I'd waited two weeks, which I would have done, I would have held it, and that would have been the 9th, 6th, 23rd of February, I'd have probably seen something like a seven pound loss, right? Because I, that anomaly of that three pound gain will have gone. I had lost a pound and a half, right? Again, weight loss isn't linear. And then whatever else I'd lost going, so I could have seen like seven, maybe even eight pounds weight loss in two weeks. Moral of the story, well, a couple of morals of the story, but you can't base the success of this journey on an individual result. And that is probably, for me, one of the only negatives of weighing every two weeks. It does put a lot of pressure on that one result. I get that. I get that. But like I say, for most of you, if you are consistent, you're going to see pretty much decent results every time you get up the scales every two weeks uh and if you're really struggling to change your mindset with the scales then come work with me you know i'll put the links in the in the comments to to get on board with my coaching plan even if you just jump on board for three months it's 29.99 a month and that's the subscriptions come on a one-to-one -one plan with me uh, there is a there is a sign up fee but it's basically 30 quid a month and for 30 quid for three months if i can just you'll get six check-ins in that time. If I can justify in your mind exactly why you're getting each result, it will really help for you to improve your relationship with the scales. Anyway, I'm one and a half pound down. I'm counting the Friday, not the Thursday, because the Friday is my official check-in day. Like I said, if I hadn't gotten the Friday, I would have counted the Thursday. And in my mindset, I'm like, do you know what? I'm six weeks in. And I'm still nine pounds down in six weeks. And if I lose anything more than a pound a week on average, I'm happy. I'm all good. So I'm 13 and a half pounds down anyway in, in, in 2024 so far. A chunk of that is water retention from Christmas, eating, drinking, whatever I want, dehydration, all this, that and the other. But I would say I'm probably about eight and a half pounds down, which I am more than happy with. Uh, more than happy. Now, I would expect my weight loss to, to slow down a little bit. Well, it has done this week, one and a half pound. Uh, like I say, the deficit I'm in, I'm hoping to see on average a two to three pound fat loss. But if if it's one and a half every two weeks, I, I'm not bothered at all. I'm more than any loss is, is a good loss and a step in the right direction. But yeah, so far so good. Nearly at that stone loss marker. Like I say, a chunk of that is water retention from after Christmas. But weight loss is weight loss, right? If you lose five or six pounds in excess water that's been hanging around your body, you're still five or six pounds lighter. And again, I'll keep using this word a million times. If you are consistent, that water retention, you know, water retention will fluctuate in and out of the body all the time. And that's what you see when you weigh every day. Um, but... It's it's something that, you know, if you stay consistent with your journey, it's not going to make masses of differences to the scales. It will do every now and then. We'll do every now and then. Especially if you've got something, you know, if you're female and it's time of the month, it will do. But um, you know, it will it will pop on those scales every now and then. But most of the time it, it shouldn't play a big part and you should get a pretty decent, accurate sort of loss every two weeks. All right. Uh, that's my, that's me waffling on for 15, 20 minutes about my checking, maybe a bit longer. Uh, but I think it's, it's so important for us to understand how, you know, the scales work. It really, really is. Uh, and it's just about, you know, I'm all about positivity. I'm all about keeping our mindset in this, you know, um, positive outlook. And if you're getting on the scales and you're just spitting your dummy out, Every time you're getting on the scales, even if it's it with a loss, you know, I've had 
um, I had about three or four check-ins this week, actually. Relatively new clients, to be honest with you. So we've not had time to really work on that relationship, but it will happen over time. Where, you know, oh, I've only lost, you know, I had, I think I had at least one, maybe two this week. Oh, I've only lost two pound this check-in. Um, you know, and again, it's hard because they probably, you know, started with me just after Christmas. They've seen that whoosh effect after Christmas, you know, a, a good big drop, which I do explain to them. But again, changing mentality is quite hard. Um, but, um, you know, that's my job as a coach. So if you do have an unhealthy relationship with the scales, if every time you're weighing yourself, you're really fighting a mental battle to understand the scales, to stay positive, to, you know, you spend the day questioning Come on board, get some check-ins done with me. And like I say, whenever you send a check-in over, if it's a, a, an anomaly or it's just not the result you want, you'll always tell me that. I know that. And then I'll try and justify it in your mind exactly why you're getting those results. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, it's just a case of, look, you need to work harder. That, that uh, You know, I'm not a tough coach. I'm not by any means. I'm not a, a crack the whip sort of coach. And if that's what you want, I'm not your coach. I'm not. I'm, I'm very empathetic. Because, you know, I've struggled with my weight for so long. I always coach or reply to people or even doing these these videos. Now, if I'm doing a podcast or if I'm doing content for social media, I always kind of in the back of my mind have this picture of 37 stone Neil watching it. And, you know, I'm kind of like, if 37 stone Neil was watching this, would he take something out of it or would it trigger him or would it cause... So, yeah, I think that's why, because I wouldn't, I I never would have done well with, you know, uh, a, a sergeant major type personal trainer or weight loss coach when I was, when I was 37. So I was very fragile. My mindset was very fragile when it comes to weight loss. I was very underconfident. So the last thing I need is someone that looks like they've never had a piece of cheesecake in their life barking orders at me and telling me, now, trust me, I, I know I look like I do eat cheesecake. Why is that? Because I do eat cheesecake. But yeah, that's not me as a coach. Anyway, so we talk about some food and eating. Uh, eating was good last week. Let me get my week view up. I know I can't show it yet. I suppose I can actually. Um, you might be like, uh, what's Neil talking about here? I've never thought about this, actually. I suppose I can pin uh, my week view um, while I'm talking about this. So if you're watching this back now, right? Here's my week view. I'll pin it. I'll try and find the point in this video where I'm talking about it. Uh, and I'll, I'll pin my week view on new to check so you can have a look. Um, and Monday, 2,368 calories. So I eat 2,750 calories a day on average. So I always have certain days of the week where I try and eat below my average. And then that allows me days to eat above my average. So uh, as you can see on this week view here, uh, I am uh, in green for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, this is something else I try and teach my clients. Again, it's about mentality and about mindset. When you're looking at this now, green does not mean good. Red does not mean bad. Red does not mean you're doing something wrong. Green does not mean you're doing something right. It's just for me... The green and red on NutriCheck on these individual days signifies days where I've bank calories and the red, green's where I've bank calories and days are where I've spent those banked calories. Uh, so I bank calories Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Pretty even, if I'm being honest with you. If you look at those days, I was a little bit lower on Tuesday, but around that 2,300 calorie mark uh, for four days, 2,232 on Tuesday, uh, and I banked there. What have I banked? Three, uh, let's just freeze. I'm going to go 4,480. So I've banked about 2,100 calories uh, to take into the weekend. So my daily average is 2,750. So I've got 2,750 for Saturday, 2,750 for Sunday, and then another 2,000 calories to add. I could add all of that to Saturday and have 2,750 Sunday. I could split it up. And as you've seen there, I had quite a high calorie day Saturday. So nearly 4,000 calories on Saturday. And then 3,500 calories on Sunday. And I was still 174 calories under, excuse me, under my ideal 
just got a little bout of windy pops then, uh, under my ideal deficit, uh, which is kind of where I want to be. And I'm absolutely chuffed this week why, uh, why that I'm under my ideal deficit of 19,250. Again, I always stick to a set kind of like, look at it as a weekly target of calories, daily average, weekly target. And that's what I'm aiming to hit. Uh, and yeah, chuffed to bits. Why? Because I was fighting. I've always, I've spoke the last couple of these that I've done about uh, Groundhog Day. The weeks have been, again, last week was pretty much Groundhog Day, you know, Monday to Friday is what it is, working, you know, uh, stick to my routine. You can see there, very, quite structured, very even sort of spread of calories. Uh, weekends can always be a little bit of a danger zone. Uh, and someone asked me on my weight loss live, uh, not my weight loss live, my TikTok live this morning. Um... They, they sort of said, how do you curb binge eating at the weekend? Uh, and I said, well, first of all, are you binge eating or are you just overeating? There's a big difference. Um, and, you know, I sort of said, well, let me show you my week. And as you can see here, I have overeaten at the weekend, but I've saved up for it during the week. It's the same with money. You know, at the weekend, I've spent a lot more money on Saturday and Sunday that I did Monday to Friday. And I don't mean that as in like I've gone out blowing loads of money, but um, Sunday we went, to, yesterday we went shopping. We went to, where did we go shopping? Uh, we went to Home Bargains. Uh, we went to m &S actually, and you're going to spend money in m &S. We went to m &S and got a few bits. I don't really, we don't shop loads at m and m and for me is just one of them when you fancy a little bit of a treat. Uh, and uh, Rachel had seen a couple of the Valentine's Day, uh, we didn't get the dining Valentine's Day for two, but she seen a couple of the Valentine's Day bits that she wanted to try. So uh, we went to m &S and we got a couple of those bits. What else do we get from m &S? Oh, we got chicken Kiev's because we fancied that for tea last night, but we didn't have it for tea last night. I'm having it for tea tonight. Um, and as, as you can see there, I've eaten quite a bit more at the weekend. I spend quite a bit, but I don't spend any money during the week. I'm a right tight bum during the week. I don't want to spend any money. We don't go out anywhere. We don't do anything. Uh, we eat what's in the fridge. I suppose other than going shopping or if I need you know, a bit of food shopping, Aldi or putting petrol in, I don't do anything. Whereas at the weekend, I am a bit more freer with my, with my spending. So, you know, if I went to, I nearly went to the pub yesterday afternoon. I wouldn't have drunk alcohol. I've not drunk alcohol since New Year's Eve. Um, I'm having a couple of months off it, but you know, I nearly went to the pub yesterday to watch the footy. I would have had a few bottles of Heineken Zero and a couple of Diet Cokes. Again, that's more money than I would normally spend during the week. Not a lot. I've been tight at the moment because we've got a lot of stuff coming up in April, May and June. Um, which I'm going to cover in these weekly weight loss vlogs. I, I, I went through it, I think, on a TikTok live last week. I've, I've, I've got from the 11th of April till the end of June, like pretty much something on every week. And a lot of us are just get so overwhelmed by it. how do you lose weight when you've got all this on? Well, I'll, I'll vlog it. I'll tell you. I'm not saying I'm going to lose loads of weight. I probably won't. But I'll tell you how I stay positive and how I certainly will maintain my weight and I certainly won't gain. You know, it's dead easy to, to just give up, isn't it? And just chuck everything in the bin. But I won't. Anyway, that's for another, probably about six weeks away from that from that point. But that's when I won't be going, it's Groundhog Day. I mean, it, 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 it's going to get a little bit hectic. But it is Groundhog Day at the moment, so uh, I'm pretty good. But yeah, I struggled a little bit with my eating this weekend. Um... Not in terms of control, because obviously you can see from from the NutriTrack that's up there, I have been in control of my eating. I, I, I've been fine because I've stayed under. But I was just struggling a little bit with, with um, we have the hunger demons talking to me. So it was a bit tough um, to control me, to control my calories. What did I do about that this weekend? Well, let's have a look. Let's go through uh, my day view. Like I say, Monday to Friday is pretty boring, to be honest with you. Monday, uh, protein pancakes for breakfast, uh, yogurt, fruit, standard one. I have done a video on this in my social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram Reels, uh, on how I have my protein uh, pancakes. Uh, lunch is uh, my rice, my chicken. I was still in my uh, Chinese curry sauce phase kind of thing. So that was lunch. Uh, mango yogurt protein drink Monday afternoon. Tea was jacket potatoes, cheese, beans, tuna. And then I had an Oreo grenade bar and a bag of Monster Munch at night time. And that's what 
made up my 2,368 calories. Um, Tuesday, uh, I had protein porridge for breakfast. Uh, lunch was, again, chicken, um, uh, rice, broccoli, Chinese curry sauce. Uh, Mid-afternoon snack, I had uh, a little Milbonna high-protein strawberry-flavoured drink. Very, very nice. I do like those. Um, and then tea was, oh, my bacon and mushroom carbonara. I've got a video of me making this, actually, on social media. I'll find it, and I'll ping it out. Oh, sometimes you just want a good bowl of pasta, and that was a really good bowl of pasta. Uh, evening snacks Tuesday night was a bag of Tangy Toms and a grenade Oreo bar uh, for 2,232 calories. Uh, Wednesday's eating, uh, back on my protein pancakes. I think I alternated protein pancakes, protein porridge, protein pancakes, protein porridge uh, for my breakfast last week. Uh, still on my chicken and my rice and my Chinese curry sauce. Oh, actually, I did a chicken fried rice. I mixed it up a little bit on Wednesday. So I did a chicken fried rice with curry sauce. Basically, chicken, broccoli and rice and just all in a wok rather than having it all separate on a bowl. It was nothing major. Uh, again, I had another Lidl Mill Bonnet. Oh, I, I'm lying there. I had half on Tuesday and then half on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday night for me tea. I had my mum round. I did a breakfast. How good. Right, why is everything that we eat for breakfast better at night time? Like, a bowl of cereal at night time on the sofa is one of the best things to eat uh, and a full English breakfast again at night time it just tastes better than it does at, at breakfast time doesn't it uh, so I had two skinny pork sausages from the specially selected skinny pork sausages from Aldi uh, I had three bacon medallions two eggs uh, I kind of dry I say dry fry I don't really I put a drizzle I've got ninja pans they're amazing they're non-stick and you hardly need any oil so I put like half a teaspoon of oil in my cold ninja frying pan take me two fingers and just run it all around the pan so it coats the pan crack me eggs in I did four eggs two for me one for Rach that's my wife, by the way, and one for my mum, uh, just in case I've never talked about Rachel before, have I on these? Probably have. Um, so I did four eggs in there, and I, and I put a lid on. So the underneath kind of lightly fries in a little bit of olive oil, and then the top, it sort of you get condensation on the pan lid, which falls in, and then they kind of steam. It, it's the best eggs. I'll have to do a video on how to make them. Uh, had a hash brown, half a tin of beans, um, one slice of bread, and that was it. And that was it. 730 calories. Great tea. Uh, evening snacks. Again, another bag of Tangy Toms and a Snickers white chocolate protein bar, which is one of these. And they're just becoming my favourite protein bar of all time at the moment. Um, Snickers high protein, low sugar chocolate bar. Absolutely uh, amazing. Can you see me all right? I'm very conscious that it's going quite dark here. Let me, I might turn my screen up on my computer. See if I can, no, it's as bright as it goes. Right, I'm going to turn my light on halfway through. Is that better? I thinking, it's going dark. Um, there we go. And then uh, that was Wednesday, Thursday, protein porridge. Um, what did I have Thursday dinner time? Oh, I had a wrap. Oh, Thursday dinner time, I made my big breakfast wrap, which you can't get at McDonald's anymore. Apparently, uh, some sort of, it's, it's either the egg thing that they put on it has sold out, it's gone. Um, I don't know if they're back in stock now, but over the weekend, um, I had a McDonald's over the weekend and there was a sign and then it was a bit of a national out, outrage that, um, that the big breakfast wraps have gone. Anyway, I made my own. Again, that's on my TikTok or my Instagram Reels if you want to know how to make one. Uh, healthier, lower calorie, uh, more protein than McDonald's version. Tastes delicious. Uh, protein shake uh, mid-afternoon uh, and some peanuts on Thursday. Just seen that. Uh, and then Thursday night for tea. Do you know what? This is my new addiction. I, I am very much... I get into something and I'll eat it all the time for a week, week and a half and then I'll move on to the next thing. And at the moment, it's literally two protein thins from Aldi. Uh, I put it on my Instagram today, actually. Uh, so four slices of protein thins, but two thins, basically. Uh, two of those uh, with the eggs that I just did before. I said they're sort of uh, lightly fried in a bit of olive oil with the pan lid on. Four eggs, so two protein thins, 
so four slices of protein thin, basically toasted, smidge of butter on each one, egg on each one, a little bit of salt. Absolutely love it. It's 600 calories um, and it's, it's just, uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Loads of protein, 40 odd grams of protein, 600 calories. Obviously, I have four eggs and four thins. You could quite easily have two thins, you know, two one thin, so two slices, two eggs, and obviously half, it's like not even 300 calories. Um, and then evening snacks. Some, I always have a bag of crisps every night. So I had some uh, Space Raiders uh, and another white chocolate uh, Snickers bar. Uh, let's get into Friday. Uh, Friday was protein pancakes. What a surprise. Alternating again. Uh, Friday dinner time. I had those protein thins with the eggs on again. Um, I had a tribe chocolate peanut triple decker protein bar, which I actually really enjoyed. I am not plant based whatsoever. Um, you might have realized that for the amount of meat that I do eat. And the amount of protein shakes that I have, whey proteins I have, but some plant based protein bars are amazing, and that tribe one's really, really good. Uh, so I had a tribe protein bar and a protein shake, protein shake every day, non negotiable, uh, every mid afternoon. Uh, for tea, I did a fake away KFC chicken burger, and I did the same thing for tea last night. So, so good. Uh, and then evening snacks, I had a bag of Jacob's Crinklies. I told you I have a bag of Chris every day. And I had a grenade bar again. So that is my midweek eating. Um, uh, my, or my, my sort of uh, school night eating, as you were, or my Monday to Friday eating. And then at weekend, Saturday, protein porridge. Um, you get a theme here. Saturday dinner time, had a McDonald's. Went over to my wife's uh, mum's on Saturday. We've not seen them actually since Christmas. Uh, they live uh, Manchester way, so uh, we drove over there. I'm Blackpool way, they're Manchester way. So not far, about 45, 50 minutes. So we drove over there, picked up a niece and nephew, and we went to a country park. If anyone's round the uh, Walkden, Tilsley, Salford, Clifton area, uh, we went to Clifton Country Park. We had a walk around there with the dogs and the kids. Uh, and then we got a McDonald's on the way back. And I had a wrap of the day, which was the chicken Caesar salad. Is it chicken Caesar wrap? Absolutely love that from McDonald's. Uh, always get the wrap of the day. It's two quid. Brilliant. Uh, and then me and Rach, uh, Rach got a chicken sandwich. And then we split a uh, cheeseburger Happy Meal. And then we also got the McDonald's raspberry and white chocolate pie, which was unreal. They are amazing. Again, we just had half each. Uh, I had a glass of skim, uh, semi-skim milk in the afternoon. And then we got the Carlos Stuff Crust Takeaway Pizza from... This is why I eat more at a weekend. Uh, or more, certainly more calories. Uh, probably eat less volume at the weekend, more calories. Uh, so we got that from Aldi uh, for Saturday night. So pizza on the couch Saturday night, which was lovely. Uh, and then also from Aldi, uh, the Valentine's section, they had a bake in the oven brownie. I don't know if you've seen it. It's quite calorific, but it was delicious. I had that with uh, half a tub of low-calorie ice cream. And then a few snacks in bed. And yesterday's eating, uh, what did I have yesterday? Sugary cereal, non-negotiable. So as you see, all week, uh, Monday to Saturday, either protein pancakes, protein porridge, which is basically, it's healthy. I have loads of fruit in there, good amount of protein in there, honey in there, lots of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, delicious. Sunday morning is sugary cereal morning. I love sugary cereal. I would eat it every day for breakfast if I could, but why don't I? It's not healthy. It doesn't fill my body. It doesn't fill me up, but... I have it every Sunday morning. So I had the uh, Aldi cocoa and peanut butter balls yesterday for breakfast. Uh, dinner yesterday was a good old fashioned bacon sandwich. Um, yesterday afternoon snacks, protein shake, non-negotiable. Didn't have a protein shake uh, Saturday afternoon, but I had a glass of milk instead, which is basically what a protein shake is. You just get a little bit more uh, bang for your buck in terms of calories to protein ratio using a whey powder. Uh, and then last night did the KFC again in the Valentine section. So I did my own KFC tower burger. So I did my own KFC chicken with a hash brown in it, low fat cheese slice, uh, lettuce, low fat mayonnaise or light mayonnaise, a little bit of Tommy K. And again, from the Valentine section, the Wagyu triple cooked or Wagyu triple cooked chips from Aldi. Absolutely banging. 
They were ace. So I had that last night. And then evening snacks in bed yesterday. Uh, I just had a bag of crisps and a Milky Way crispy roll. The back at home bargains. There you go. That's my whole week's eating. That is my whole week's eating uh, gone through. But under my calories, um, not the healthiest weekend by any means. Pretty damn healthy through the week. Healthy for, you know, what, what, what? Some people describe as healthy compared to what others do. But for me personally, what I look at when it comes to being healthy in terms of my overall diet is, and again, some people might have a different take on this, but I like to look at, my, um, my are my calories in line with my goal? Yes, I'm on that. So that's great, right? Uh, I then have a look at my saturated fat. Now, the recommended intake of saturated fat a day for uh, a healthy adult is about 30 grams a day. So if we times that by seven, that's 210 grams a week. And last week, I'll be honest with you, I had 230 grams of saturated fat. So I've gone quite over. And that's because I had quite an unhealthy weekend. But I'm not really too bothered. If I went back the week before, I had 200 grams. So I was under by 10, right? Uh, the week before that, I had 200 and. 237, so again, I'm a bit older, and the week before that, I had 180, so it's always about an average, so again, I wasn't stupidly healthy last week, but I wasn't stupidly unhealthy in terms of saturated fat, uh, I then look at sugar, now again, for an adult, right, the recommended uh, allowance uh, or recommended intake of total sugar. So this does include fructose. This does include lactose. So lactose is the naturally occurring sugars in dairy. Fructose is the naturally occurring sugars in fruit. It's also present in honey. And then you've got like your table sugar, your processed sugar, like your caster sugar, your granulate sugar, that we class that as sucrose, right? But we do need to look at total sugars as a whole, right? So uh, again, the total recommended intake for a healthy adult that has no issues with diabetes or insulin resistance or anything like that is 90 grams of total sugar a day. For me, it's actually higher than that because I move a lot, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm all good. So I can consume a bit more than that. But again, last week, if I use the 90 grams, as that's total sugar. So I, I sort of, again, that includes your lactose, your fructose, that's everything. Some people say it's less than that, but I just go on the recommended averages of, of you know, of what the doctors say, the NHS say, you know, it's, I, I'm fine with that, you know. Um, and it is 90 grams a day. So nine times seven, 630. Last week, I had 600 grams of sugar, so I'm 30 under, right? The week before, I had 550 grams, so I'm 80 under the recommended intake. Uh, the week before that, I had 640, so I was 10 grams over. Uh, the week before that, I was bang on 630. Uh, and the week before that, I was bang on 630 again. So again, this is how I look at health, right? I don't look at, oh, is it this, is that? no. What I know is there are certain things that we consume that if we over consume them, they will be dead. If we over consume anything at a certain level, it's detrimental to our health. That includes water, right? You drink too much water, it will become a poison for the body, yeah? But there are certain things that we really need to watch. And the two main things is overconsumption of sugar. You can consume sugar. It's overconsumption of sugar and overconsumption of saturated fats. And if I, you know, I'm not overly consuming, uh, you know, I'm roughly in the ballpark of um, my saturated fats and my sugar intake. I'm getting some fruits and veggies into my diet on a regular basis. Am I hitting my five a day? Yeah, I don't know if I can see that on this day view, but out of my five a day, if I go back to, uh, I'm conscious that this is uh, waffling on a bit now, but so on Monday last week, uh, out of my five a day, I hit 3.9. I'll be honest with you, I hit 3.9, so I'm a bit under. On Tuesday, I hit 6.7, so I'm over. On Wednesday, I hit six, so I'm over, right? On Thursday, I hit two, so I'm well under, right? But that's because I kind of had, like, my tea was literally... I always have veg for my tea normally, and I just had them eggs and protein thins. Uh, also, Nutritrek doesn't class potatoes as part of your five a day, whereas I do... So this doesn't include my potatoes as well that I had. 
Uh, Friday, I was at five, so I've got my five a day. Uh, Sunday, again, Saturday, Sunday, I was at two. And yesterday, zero. It's not counting any of my five a day. Now, to be honest with you, I did have yesterday lettuce uh, <laughs> on my tea, but I didn't count it, right? So when I look at that week, I'm like, I could have done better with my five a day. Again, I'd look at an average. So I would want over the space of a week for it to say 35 for my five a day. So five a day times seven is 35. Obviously, at weekends, if I'm going to be a bit unhealthier, I need to consume a little bit more during the week. But um, most of the times of the week, I was rubbish at the weekend. I know I was. But I think, as, again, maybe yesterday I was struggling with my hunger because I was, uh, you know, overall... The previous weekends, I've only ever really kind of what I've had what I call treat nights, right? So I've kind of kept my eating on a Saturday and Sunday through the day as I would do normally with like my protein porridge or my protein pancakes with like my broccoli and my rice and this, that and the other at lunchtime and some chicken and maybe a bit of sauce over the top. This weekend, I didn't. So maybe that's the reason why, you know, I've not fueled the body correctly, but I've stayed in control. And it's Monday and, I, and I'm back at it. Um, so eating's been good. Eating, like I say, my main goal is to stick to my calories. I've stuck to my calories. I've looked through that now. I've kind of thought, do you know what? Calories are bob on, but could I have been... My saturated fat's all right. My, my, my sugar's all right. So I'm not too unhappy with that. I could definitely have had a bit more fruit and veg last week. So that's something I will put into my diet this week. More fruits and veggies. Um... All good. Movement. My movement's always pretty decent. And it's something I never need to worry about too much. Um, I averaged last week. I think I did 10,800 steps. And that was with a... I don't know how I did it. But last Saturday, so which would have been the 3rd of Feb, I, I've, I've, I, I, I've put my foot down walking. I was going to the pub to watch the rugby, actually. Uh, and I didn't think anything of it at the time. And I just put my foot down. And I felt something like maybe pop a little bit in my foot. Nothing major and didn't feel it all Saturday. Woke up Sunday and I'm like, mm, it's a little bit sore that. But no, it's, is it, isn't it? And then we went for a good walk on Sunday morning, like 40, half an hour, 45 minutes for, you know, decent sort of walk. Fine. Monday, my foot's been really sore and I can still feel it today a little bit. But I still did 10.8 thousand steps a day on average. So, um, so more than happy on movement. I ate the gym five times last week. Though again... <laughs> hurt my foot and then on Friday it, it, Friday or Saturday I felt I've, I've injured my shoulder a little bit but I've trained with it today and it's not too bad I just think I need to protect it for a couple of weeks hopefully shoulders are a very weak joint so you've got to be very very careful with them anyway there we go that's it that's this week's weekly weight loss vlog kind of done again it's just me analyzing my own journey I suppose going through my own uh, diary and, and, it, and it's good because well, like I say, I've said a couple of bits there. I'm like, oh. um, yeah, I probably need to get a bit more fruit and veg into my diet Monday to Friday this week. Uh, I think this weekend's going to be a better weekend as well because, like I say, last week we were out all day Saturday because we went over to see uh, my wife's mum and, and her niece and nephew. So it just affects it affects things a little bit. Fine with calorie control, but it affects the way that we fuel the body, or certainly the way that I fuel my body. But anyway, we're six weeks into 2024, six weeks done. I was like looking at it, tick the weeks off. I, talk, I talked about that on my socials this morning and on my TikTok Live. My dad always used to use the saying, look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. And that's a little bit of my philosophy with weight loss when just you just tick the weeks off. That's what I like to do, tick the weeks off, you know, and if I keep looking after each week as a whole, then over the space of a month or two months or six months or 12 months, the journey will, will be a success. Guys, as always, if you feel you need any extra help, support, you can join my community or you can come on to my one-to-one -one plan. You get the community included in that. I'll put all the links in. Any questions, fire them in. Any comments, please. And I will try and get back to them. Uh, and as always, you know, I hope you found this a little bit of a help, a little bit of a, you know, see how how my week's gone. If there's any suggestions as well you'd like me to talk about in these weekly weight loss vlogs, I want to try and stay, can, you know, uh, up, continuous with them, consistent with them, sorry, should I say. So if there's anything else you'd like to like for me to discuss that maybe you're struggling with or how I, how I go through different bits and pieces, uh, let me know. Let me know and I'll... Um, 
uh, and I'll and I'll put them into uh, I'll put them into into next week so the week after whatever. I'm waffling now. Right. Hope you all have a good weight loss week. It is a new weight loss week because it's Monday. So as I've done there, make sure you're tack tackling your calories. Make sure you're getting those steps in. And until next time, make sure you boss your weight loss.